Hey everybody, my name is Sandy Kuprat and I am here to do the power half hour about cover letters. So I know that many of you, when you think of cover letters, it's probably something that makes you shaking your shoes or what have you. Um, and there are some people where they say it's a, a strategy that they, they only apply to places that don't require cover letters. However, most of the big prestigious companies that a lot of our students at Baruch are interested in applying for, they are looking for cover letters. Why? Because it is a indicator of your writing skills. You know, it's like almost like a writing sample. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is talking about what goes into making a good cover letter so that you are able to make a good impression in writing ultimately when you are applying. So ultimately the goal of a cover letter is to get an interview. So some, some basic tenets of cover letters are that they should be brief, interesting. It should not be verbatim from your resume. So meaning you, you have to try and use some word variety so you're not just repeating what's on your resume. You should target it and each one should be custom. There's no such thing as a generic cover letter that you send to everybody in all different types of jobs. You should be reading the cover letter and trying to target some of the language and the messaging and, and look for what are they looking for and think to yourself, when did I do that thing? And, and, and is this something that I might want to put in the cover letter so that people know that I'm the person that they should be inviting to this interview? So anyway, so it should be eager, it should be positive, it should be confident, uh, and you want them to know how you're going to be an asset to them, not the other way around. And that's probably like the number one biggest mistake that students do is like, I'm, I'm really interested in working with this company because I'm going to get this and I'm going to get this and I'm going to get this. No, no, no. What do you bring to the plate is what you have to think about and how you should be um, framing your experiences. What, what makes you different? How can you help them in their, with their business goals? Um, so you want to also be able to demonstrate your strengths and what will make you an asset to their company. All right, so um, in a standard letter, letter of application is, is targeted for a, for a specific job posting. So what typically that means is they say, you look for a job online or through Star Search that says, um, it gives you the job description and some some of the basic things that you might be doing in a day, you know, so that you know what this, how you could possibly target it. So you want to showcase skills that meet the target's company, the, the company's needs. You want it to use some terms and jargon found on the posting. You want to feature your experience, tie your experiences to the skills and show how your skills directly relate to the job description. Okay. So a networking letter, this is more a letter of inquiry, something that you send out. It's like you are interested in learning more about the company or about the business, but there may not be a job necessarily posted. And we call that, it's called an informational interview. Um, and what an informational interview is, and that sounds really scary, but it's really not. What it is, is, is reaching out to somebody, asking for a 20, 30 minute meeting to learn more about the company. And so this is, this is your opportunity to ask questions about jobs, um, what people like about the job, don't like about the job, like about the company, don't like about the company. And so that's what this particular networking letter is talking about is, is you're requesting an opportunity to talk with somebody in that particular industry. And so this could be in a formal letter could be in an email, but it also could be, you know, a little quickie through LinkedIn. Often that's something that you could do as well. So you want to express your passion for the company and the industry and impress them by showing that you've done some of your research. Like maybe you want to say, I'm really interested in this particular company because they're they have a focus on sustainability or something that you think sets them apart from us and why you want to work there. All right. So, so bottom line, with a cover letter, it's, it's kind of like a three- Tem a three paragraph, and I'm not going to call it a template because that's like the wrong word to use. It's, it, it's a three paragraph format. Let's just call it a format that you use um, to when you are doing your cover letter with the first and the third being the easiest parts of the paragraph and the second paragraph. That's the meat and potatoes, the body section 
that is, and I want you to think about it this way, is this is your, the second paragraph is where you talk about all the things that you have that they care about in the job that you're trying to apply to. But let's just talk about the first and the third paragraph because I think those are easy squeezy, okay? So in the intro, you want to introduce who you are, state what position you're applying for and how you heard about it. And I'm going to tell you why that's really important. So sometimes companies will have multiple jobs, even with the same title. They may have different ones posted in different ways. So when you're interacting with human resources, it's important to let them know which position that are you applying for and where you learned about it and when. So this way they know where to send your application in case it gets disjointed from, from where you posted it. Okay, so it's important to let them know, you know, my name is Sandy. I am a current Baruch student. I'm applying for the position that I saw posted on Star Search uh, on for this particular item for for audit intern on on December fifth. Well, that was posted December fifth. Okay, you kind of let them know where and how you heard about that. I'm going to go to the third paragraph. So the third paragraph is, thank you for your time and and, and consideration. Um, I am interested in talking about how I can help you or help the company um, and how I'm qualified for this particular position. And you give them your contact information typically in this one. Thank you for your time. I look forward to speaking with you. Please contact me at this email and this phone number. Okay, and so that's an easy paragraph too. And this middle one, that's the one that you have to spend some time on. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit further. So let me just show you, so this, these are our slides, but I'm gonna show you one last thing too. So I'm gonna to toggle back and forth between this and our website. So let me just go to here. So in addition to, of course, looking at this presentation, you could also find out about cover letters in our cover letter guide. So if you click on students, write a resume, right, it'll bring you to this particular page, right? And this is our resume writing guide, looks something like this. And then if you go to page 22, I look at this so often that I know that page 22 is uh, of this book is where they start going into cover letters. And so here, why I like this book so much, and again, this is also on your Star Search homepage, is it describes what the intention of a cover letter, what you should be thinking about, best practices. It tells you and explains, just like in this presentation here, the intention of the intro paragraph, the intention of the conclusion, and then the intention of the body and how that could be. And then what I like also, now check this out. Here's a nice example. So this particular person is looking for a marketing type uh, internship, right? And so, it, and this just kind of shows you how simple it really can be. Kind of here's the first paragraph, easy. Last paragraph, easy. And this is where this person really went into detail about their experiences and how she, what she has that they care about in the job that she is trying to go into. All right, but I'm going to go back to the slides. But I just wanted to show you that the, so there's multiple ways to get this information. It's just not just on this recording here. Okay, so now we're here in paragraph three. Okay, so how you begin. So you state the reason for writing, uh, name the specific position and the type of work that you're applying for, state the resource where you found out about it. So in the example here, as a public affairs major in my junior year at Baruch College, I'm writing to express my interest in the Aaron Foundation internship at the Center for American Progress. I learned about this opportunity through Baruch College's Career Center, right? Easy, that's paragraph one. That's like a nice, nice, easy paragraph. Here's the body of it, but you know what? I'm gonna come back to that. And the closing, let me just show you the closing. Just like I said, this is the easy one. Paragraph one and paragraph three are easy. So if, if so, for those of you who are procrastinators, do paragraph one, paragraph three um, first, and then focus in on the middle one. All right, so how to close your cover letter. So you want to one, refer the reader to the enclosed resume and application or writing sample. Thank them for considering your application, ask for the interview and repeat your contact information so that's clear how they can contact you. So let's just take a look at that example that they have down here. So I would appreciate the opportunity to meet with you to learn more about your company and how I might contribute to its continued success. Now, can you see the difference here? So what this is, what they're doing here is they're saying, can you see how I might contribute to your success? I help you for your success. 
versus the other way around. Some students make the mistake of saying how, how I will get something from this opportunity. Just remember that, okay? I look forward to hearing from you in the near future to schedule my interview. I can be reached at this phone number, this email. Thank you for considering my application. Sincerely, and your name, and then sign, space, sign, sign it if you can, but if not, you just leave it, no, only leave space if you're signing it, okay? So that is the last paragraph. Well, let's go back to the sweet spot, the middle paragraph. Now, this is the part that's hard, and this is gonna have to take some thinking on your part, all right? Because only you know what you are, you and your career counselor, if you work together with the career counselor, can help figure out your middle paragraph and what sets you apart from the rest. So sell yourself, right? And so, and I want you to think about, so this cover letter, so this middle paragraph, this middle paragraph, what do I have that they care about in the job that I'm going for? You use that in short version when you are in networking situations. What do I have that they care about when I'm in a networking situation, when I'm on an interview? So verbally, you're doing that. You're doing it on the cover letter. And this same methodology, how you're thinking, what do I have that they care about, can also be used for when you're applying to grad school, except you elaborate a little bit more. You get more writing space for that when you're applying to grad school. But it's the same basic premise. What do I have that they care about? Okay, so sell yourself. Start with a transferable skill, provide an example of demonstrating the skill, share how you would apply the skill in this new role and explain why you would want to work at this new company. Okay, so let's just read this together. My past experiences have taught me the importance of taking initiatives at my job and school. My relevant experience includes working in telemarketing for the Baruch College Fund where I was able to raise over $50,000 in donations to the college through telephone solicitation. It's 10% more than the average donation amount and by going above and beyond to share the impact of their donation to Baruch students and develop a relationship with donors. Additionally, in my coursework, I have had exposure to statistics, economics, banking practices and futures and options. I have taken additional courses in Reuters and Bloomberg at Baruch College's Wasserman Trading Floor and I'm very interested in using these skills at Bank of America. Okay, so what he so you can see how this is like chock full of really, really, really good information. This is this is supposed to get them excited to want to meet you, and and to highlight some of the skills that you have that they care about here. And so even if you don't have any experience in the job you're trying to get into, think about your classes. Have you had any projects that you might want to tell them about? That's stuff that you can put in here as well. Or did you have to write a paper about something that they might care about in the job you're going for? So that middle paragraph is, is just so, so, so important. All right, and we just did that already. Okay, <clears throat> it's really, really important for you to get feedback on your cover letter, just to make sure that there's no typos, no errors, and even to bring it to this, to the career center to make sure, are you highlighting the best things? You know, is there something that you're missing? Is this, is this exciting? Is it not exciting? But here's some basic mistakes that people do so that you don't do them. Cover letters should be any, they should not be more than one page. So anything that's longer than a page will probably be thrown in the garbage. Um, if the body is too long, if you're rep repetitive, um, so meaning if the body is too long, so meaning if you're going on and on and on, and you're being repetitive. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of like a, a delicate balance between being both brief and, well, being, I was gonna say brief, being concise and letting them know what you have, um, and, but yet not going overboard. Um, we don't want to duplicate letters, meaning forgetting to change the address of the organization or even the addressee. Um, so sometimes what, what happens is students kind of use one as a, a template. So meaning if I'm applying to a bunch of different types of marketing positions at marketing companies, and I am putting a certain marketing company's name on, let's just say Ogilvy. So if I had, if I used my Ogilvy for a different um, IPG media brands, and I forgot to change it in one spot, that's a bad thing. That's something your cover letter is going to go in the garbage. Okay. Um, even too, if you in your cover letter are writing about all these great things that they don't care about. So for example, if you are going for a marketing position and you're telling them about, um, you're telling them about your ability to troubleshoot copy machines. They don't care necessarily. You know what I mean? Or if they're, if you are, if you're, it's a marketing role and you are telling them about your uh, accounting skills, they may be like, mm, I don't, I don't know. This person's a match. So you want to make sure that what you're highlighting is what they care about here. 
um, yeah, indicating that the employer can work. Yeah, so this is the other thing too. So if you put in there what they, you're going to get or what rather than what you can do for them, that's a big mistake. Okay, so, so this is an example here. I would like to work for NPR so I could learn about current events. No, no, you talk about, I, I would like to work at NPR because I'm excited to bring my writing skills to help whatever it is that, that you would want to put there. Another thing that people do, what's common, is that they use too many different fonts. Um, and so sometimes that could be distracting or even using different colored text. So it's just, it's just, just keep it plain, keep it simple. Don't use different font sizes and things like that. Keep it um, just very plain. And uh, it's more about the writing that you want to pay attention to rather than the format on this. All right, and so if you're doing an email version of the cover letter, use the same format you know, with an intro, a body and conclusion, except the only difference is that you don't put your address and the date on it, because that's going to have that in the title. Be professional in your writing. So um, even the subject line should be descriptive. So you put your first name, last name, cover letter for Bank of America, as they say here. And you can attach your cover, you can also attach the complete cover letter as a Word document to the email if you like that. All right, so this is an example of an email one. Dear Mr. Media, I was suggested to you by Dr. George Daly, my professionalism journal as professionalism, professionalism, journalism professor at Baruch College who suggests that your company might have an opening for an editorial intern. Currently, I am a junior majoring in English and minoring in journalism. As you will note from the enclosed resume, I have maintained a high GPA while also working part-time throughout college. My background includes training experience and, and various other writing, research, and public speaking. The following accomplishments are noteworthy. Serving as the opinions editor on the ticker, writing the 2005 Milton Hall Awards for creative writing, representing Baruch College in the past two years as a member of the debate team, which ranks second regionally. Terrific. I am interested in learning more about the internships at the editorial department at Madison Avenue Press. And I'd like the opportunity to elaborate how my communication and research skills would benefit your publication. Please uh, feel free to contact me. Thank you for your time and consideration. Sincerely, Mona Motivation. So that's a nice, that's a nice cover letter. That's great. Okay. So tips for writing a cover letter. Format your letter with an intro, body, and conclusion. Again, that three paragraph format. Tailor the letter to be specific to the job that you're applying for. Express your enthusiasm. Say, I was so excited to learn about this position. If you are, you know. Um, so, but, but express enthusiasm. Convey your skills and relevant experience. Proofread, spell check, have other people look at it. Really important. Use the ABC checklist and rubric as a guide. Okay. Uh, have others read it and come into walk in hours. So that's, it's really, really important for you to get feedback. And this is nice too. So save the document as a PDF to avoid formatting errors. So sometimes what happens if you have different, if the employer has a different version of Word than you do, that the form, it may not show up on their end the way you intended it to. So it's important to save things as a PDF so it kind of preserves the way you intended it to actually look. All right, trash can documents. Which, which mistakes will cause your cover letter to end up in the trash? Addressing a letter to the wrong organization. Listen, I've seen it. So if you say I'm sending this to Deloitte in the top paragraph and it says EY in the bottom paragraph, it's going in the garbage. Okay, so it's really, really important, especially if you're using uh, one cover letter as like a template, so to speak, and just kind of changing certain words because you're, you're applying to similar types of jobs in different companies. Just make make sure that you are changing it. And, and with that said, you don't want to make it so generic that you're not putting the company name at all, because that's not good either. Because I'm like, oh, did they put any effort? Did they try? Because you want to put the company name. They like seeing their name. They like knowing that you're proud and that you're targeting them. Spelling errors and poor grammar. Now, listen, even if you do spell check, sometimes you have to look at look at what you have there, because it may be the word that you misspelled is a real word, but it, and therefore it won't show up on spell check, but it's the wrong word for the paragraph that you're using or the sentence that you're trying to do. Yep, using a generic letter, going in the garbage, overuse of fonts, different colored text, and a cover letter that's longer than one page is gonna go in the garbage. And that you don't want. 
All right, so just bottom line, we have the, to learn more about the services that we have and the events that we have and the employers that are coming, we have the uh, SEDC or the STAR weekly newsletter where you learn about workshops, jobs, employers coming on campus and off-campus career opportunities. We also have the SEDC blog, which has information that doesn't necessarily go into the newsletter. So you may wanna check that out as well. And we also are available here uh, through our social media channels, including there is an Instagram page, even though it's not here, but the handle is still the same. So Baruch SEDC is our handle on, on uh, Instagram. And I think that's it. So, so these are our office hours. Right now we're having virtual office hours. Um, so if you arrive at four, it will be seen by 4.30. And I think that is it. So thank you, and I hope that you have a great day.